Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Google Workspace Recap, a Tab Geeks Network show. Each week we take you through everything announced by Google Workspace, discussing the updates of the week and other relevant news and announcements. My name is Jesse Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. Tonight's episode is going to be somewhat of a two-parter. Google dropped a bombshell on its most loyal fans this week when they announced our beloved OG G Suite Legacy Free Edition accounts. That's the original Google apps that we've had forever. Uh, would be forced to begin paying or be shut down. In this episode, we're going to discuss this decision and follow it up with a live question and answer event on February 2nd, tentatively, uh, on our YouTube channel, depending on who we can get on the show. Trying to get a couple of Googlers in there, we'll see. Um, I've been talking about this all week, frankly, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Reddit. Steve, have what have you been seeing? So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think today, once we started planning uh, today's episode, I couldn't believe how many posts were just out on Reddit. For example, I had I seen one or two, you know, last week when things started happening, and one of the most popular posts had about you know over a hundred comments on it, which for the G Suite subreddit is a lot because <laughs> most things only get about you know two to four, five. I mean, ten if you're really lucky. I have a really popular post. So seeing a hundred on this one was a lot. And then today, you know, looking through all those posts and trying to figure out, okay, well, which ones are related to it? There's over 30 posts that are discussing this. So it has definitely been the talk of the town and uh, amongst, you know, many of those individuals or small businesses or families that are set, you know, primary uh, users of that legacy free edition. Now I have quite a few, I have like four legacy free tenants that I have and, each of them have a different domain that I signed up for way back when, because, you know, you can only yep. attach one domain to each one, or, you know, you had to have alias, you were forced to use aliases on all your other domains and didn't really want that. You know, I wanted ideally secondary domains, but you couldn't do it on there. So I had to create multiple tenants. So, Same. you know, now if I want to have all these different domains consolidated into one G Suite environment or, you know, workspace environment, uh, this is going to be a lot of migration work that I have to go through. Well, it's no, over 10 and, years of stuff that I've got on there. Yeah. It's like, and I mean, I, and I know how hard migrations are like, this is what I've been doing, you know? <laughs> so it is not an easy thing to move uh, accounts from one environment into, into another. And we even know Google what we're has doing. A, right. Even Google has like a 40 page document on how to do it internally. It's like, it's crazy. Um, things aren't that easy, you know, uh, migrating these accounts. So, um, yeah, it's going to be definitely a challenge. Uh, for for people if they are, uh, you know, having to make some adjustments here and not wanting to outlay the six dollars per user minimum that it's going to cost minimum, to right. minimum, yeah, uh, to upgrade here. So uh, that is something to uh, to think about for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we'll get to that. Uh, but as usual, let's go through our um, less than we thought there would be, but still a couple of updates here, and then uh, we'll plow through those, and then we can get back into the juicy stuff here, talking about this this uh, yeah. hot topic, if you will. Yeah, so we have just three updates that happened this week. Uh, pretty straightforward one, nothing too uh, exciting, I would say. I think uh, you know, we have the ability to add a page break before paragraphs in Google Docs on mobile. Uh, super excited about that one. <laughs> um, that was a sarcasm on that one. Uh, we have the improved what? editing experience in Google Chat on the web. Uh, there are some warning banners in Google Drive uh, to alert users of suspicious files. Yeah, not bad. And then, uh, you know, what had happened the other week, I think we talked about it here, where we were seeing uh, Google Vault holds uh, preventing admins from deleting users. And, you know, that made me think, well, those are some changes Google made without really announcing them. And Google has uh, available to some customers that have access in the Google Cloud community. Uh, they post the Google Workspace Visible Changes document, which talks about all the upcoming releases that are uh, planned and scheduled for release in the next couple of weeks and kind of month, kind of, I think the maximum is around two to three weeks uh, ahead of schedule. And it got me thinking. Let's post about the Google Workspace invisible changes. So I posted that <laughs> on the Cloud Connect community. Uh, got a few comments there about people discussing that, and uh, someone uh, brought up another release or another feature that has been released that really didn't get discussed. A couple other ones that had been put into the admin console, you know, marked as beta, 
and we just didn't hear anything about this, you know, new beta um, directory sync, for example, uh, just kind of showed up in a few admins consoles and haven't really heard much about what it's, uh, what it's about. And uh, the, I think the help article, you know, Brian was saying that the help article goes to a page that says it's only available to those in the beta, but not as confidential and not to share it, but the help article is public. So it's like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Uh, is it confidential or is it not? Is it released or is it not? So those are just some things we're trying to get some clarification on there. And again, you know, Google's a big company. There, there's a lot of different teams working. So, you, you know, you, you kind of get why it's happening, but you think after this many years, it might be a little bit better. Um, so, so we'll talk a little bit about those, uh, those things as well as the updates this week. And then, of course, we'll talk about that G Suite legacy free edition shut, imminent shutdown that is uh, coming for later this year. So let's get into those three topics uh, around the updates. Uh, so as I said, first one uh, that we have from Thursday last week is uh, the ability to enter page breaks before um, paragraphs in Google Docs and mobile. So just like you can do it on the web, you can now do it uh, on mobile. So head over to the, you know, editing component of your docs editor and select that insert page break and boom, there you go. Page break city. Um, so pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, straightforward in terms of uh, what this is all about. The is, uh, there is a bit of a rollout pace different for whether or not you're going to be on Android or iOS. So we have on Android devices, uh, those on rapid release and scheduled release domains are going to be getting that on a gradual rollout up to seven days for feature visibility, starting on the, the day that the announcement came out, 20th of January. And then for iOS, uh, similar uh, rollout, uh, uh, same rollout date, sorry. Uh, January 20th, but on a little bit longer gradual rollout up to 15 days for feature visibility. I wonder if that's because, I don't know, is it just taking longer to deploy out to iOS devices on the App Store? I don't know. Uh, but it is a little bit longer for that. And available to all workspace customers as well as G Suite Basic and business and legacy free. I don't know. They, they never mentioned that. So <laughs> <laughs> never really thought about that one. Um, I'm sure it's coming to those ones for a little, little a few more months until they, uh, until they sunset that condition. Uh, looking at uh, the next update, we have improved editing experience in Google Chat on the web. So mm -hmm. this is actually something I was speaking uh, to someone the other week about. Uh, they are, you know, they're an organization that is is using actually Google for everything but email. So they're using uh, what? using yeah they're using if they got a <laughs> They have a workspace enterprise edition and they're using it for everything but email. Uh, I think, and maybe everything but email and calendar. So what are they using and for email and calendar? Hey.com? Office, office 365. Oh, office. Oh my God. Yeah, Office 365. Uh, but all their document collaboration is there and they were looking at, you know, how can we use chat in addition <laughs> to the documents? So I was on about an hour call with them talking about, you know, chat functionality, how to use uh, uh, spaces, how to do the threading. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of like go on autopilot in some cases and I was, uh, putting, you know, creating a new thread and I started with a topic of, of what it's about. And I put it in between two asterisks because in order to bold <laughs> something, you have to put it in between some asterisks. And they were like, then, you know, they kind of saw that and they said, Hey, can you go back? Like, how did you make that bold again? Cause you know, you just don't select it and then do command B or control B. Well, now there'll be some easier ways to, to do those types of things. So to bold text, to uh, italicize it, underline it, and create some bullet lists, uh, those kind of things. So nice. that is going to be uh, an improvement there. I presume this is some of the reason why they were moving around those menu items because it needs more space now for these um, uh, text editing uh, icons. So that's why you have the plus on the left-hand side now. And you open that window up to do your document sheet slide inserts and you know insert from drive whereas before it was kind of down there in that uh, main bar so it's freed up some space for, for that so i can see where they were going uh someone probably knew this one was coming 
<laughs> I'm still hung up on that organization that is uh, using Office for email and and and, uh, and calendar well, and well, why? Well, you know, can what? you After, share why? I don't know. I, that's just kind of the way <laughs> it's been. So when I was when I was talking about uh, you know here's a way that you can take this part of the conversation and change it to email. Like, oh yeah, but that doesn't work because that goes to Outlook. And I'm like, well, no, no, it'll go to your Gmail too. I mean, if you're using Alec as your client, you know, it'll also show up in Gmail. Like, they're like, <laughs> nope. no, 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 we're, we're, we're on, uh, you know, use Alec and we use Exchange. I'm like, you do? Like, and I looked up their MX records. I'm like, oh, you do. <laughs> this is weird. Wow. Um, but that got the, you know, the, the showcasing of chat and integration of calendar and showing the new Gmail interface that's coming and how the inbox works with chat and spaces and document editing right there, they were like, we need another call. We need to figure out how we can actually maybe move you over think? to Google entirely <laughs> because they were just kind of blown away about, you know, with seeing all that come together and integrated together. So, uh, so that was a kind of an eye-opening little experience there for them to, uh, to kind of see sure. that all come together with that demo. So, uh, that, uh, yeah. So that, I think, the, I think I've got a call with them tomorrow. In fact, uh, to nice. talk to them a little bit more about that. So. Uh, maybe next week's episode, I'll let you know how that went and see what the, see what the plan is for them. Stay tuned. But yeah, with, uh, with this feature, this one, uh, you know, again, pretty straightforward. It's going to be there in that chat, uh, chat section there where you're typing and, um, it's going to be available, uh, to both the, uh, rapid release and scheduled release domains on an extended rollout, potentially longer than 15 days for visibility. Also starting on the 20th of January and going to be available to all workspace and G Suite basic and business customers. All right. Now, next we have a warning banner in Google drive to alert users of suspicious files. Now I, this is an interesting one because so, you know, all the documentation I've created around the notes from the field documents and all those, you know, great useful admin resources that I've shared. Well, I guess it's not all that well received because apparently what has happened is, uh, because I made all those documents and this was, you know, this dates back, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, whenever it was, when I first created the original ones, there was slightly different sharing permissions on drive files. When, when there was this, you know, make discoverable on the web, uh, feature of, you know, permission to say, allow anyone on the web to find and discover, well, it started being discoverable on Google searches. And I think that's kind of like clawed back a little bit. So I don't see as nearly as many things showing up in Google search results, but you could search for, you know, site docs.google.com and then search for some string and you can see a whole bunch of shared Google docs. Well, lo and behold, someone, you know, I, and this is, this is the weird thing too, because the person was complaining that it was showing up in their Google drive. And I'm like, well, it only shows up there if you clicked on it. Like, I, <laughs> I didn't make it show up in your Google account, you know, magically you had to somehow engage with one of those pieces of content somehow like add that folder that I put everything into in your dark drive. And like, if you want to remove it, just remove it, like delete, it doesn't delete it because you're not the owner. And despite back and forth emails and back and forth emails, they're like, I'm going to report these files to Google. You're like, you know, intruding on my, on my drive environment. I'm like, my God, this is how Google drive works. If you access a document, it becomes visible in your Google drive. Yeah, and you're engaging with this content, so it's showing up. That's what happens. Uh, I just, I just couldn't explain. I, I'm like, look, I'll get on a session with you. I'll show you how to remove it. <laughs> they just weren't having any of it. They thought. Did I they was... eventually give up? I remember you going through this. I, you know what? I eventually, I think so. I mean, I, the last I heard was maybe a few months ago, but it was persistent over the course of maybe three or four months. That's crazy. Uh, this person kept reaching out and. And they weren't happy in some of the emails. They were rather um, <laughs> upset. <laughs> and, and yeah, and like after a while, I just like kind of gave up. I'm like, there's no way to explain it. Only so much to. you can do. Right. Yeah. But so, but this feature, great for those situations where you actually do have, you know, some suspicious files or something, uh, you know, out of place. Uh, so in some of those search results that I was talking about, a lot of documents that show up are these links to malicious uh, sites or malware or ransomware or phishing. And that's kind of what this article talks about. 
And these are the types of warnings that you are going to expect to see on top of a document if uh, Google detects something uh, dangerous or suspicious about a file. So just like you are seeing uh, yellow warning banners in your, in your inbox for certain types of emails, you are going to see a similar yellow banner at the top of the document when you go into preview mode. And uh, that will alert you to something uh, potentially suspicious in that document. Uh, of course, um, if, you, if you do notice that, you know, don't take any further action on the document, don't click any links, kind of alert your uh, IT team or someone that you work with uh, that is familiar with this and uh, they can kind of point you in the right direction in terms of what to do with those with that document. So uh, this is rolling out to both those rapid release and scheduled release domains also on the 20th of January and gradually rolling out up to 15 days for feature visibility and available to all workspace and G Suite business and basic customers. So that wraps up our updates for this week. And now let's get into that interesting discussion around G Suite legacy free edition environment. Fun stuff. It is. Yeah. I, I know you, I mean, you were digging through a lot of those posts today. Yeah. Um, I had seen a couple of them last week. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of different use cases, you know, as I said, you know, in, in my situation, I had domains that I wanted, you know, to be able to send to, and I created separate ones for each one. You have uh, a lot of people that are individuals with, you know, maybe people in the family that are using those domains and they have, you know, kind of a domain related to their family and they want to have accounts for everyone. So, you know, let's say you have five, six, seven people in the family, you know, paying six bucks a person. Um, and so, you know, it starts to add up right yep. now. If you're a business and you're running on G Suite Legacy Free Edition, and you've been essentially milking it for free all these years, uh, and you are an actual business, I think in those cases it's kind of time to pay up. You know, it's it's um, you know I think definitely that the way that they have gone about announcing this, which is essentially a an invisible uh, uh, change. You know, they didn't really. Uh, <laughs> publicize this. It just kind of happened in a support article. As far as I know, I don't know. I didn't, haven't well, seen any other kind of That's the weird thing because that, in yeah. the nine to five Google article, it says in an email to administrators this morning, Google said it will quote now transition all remaining users to an upgraded really? Google workspace paid subscription based on your usage. And they have a screenshot of the email, but I haven't gotten it on any of my accounts. I mean, I'm checking right now because yeah, I was. I, I went through all of them earlier, and I was like, "Wait, what? Are you kidding me? Nothing." Let's see here. Um, Google yeah, domains, when... domain renewal, um, spam, spam, email from my grandparents. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean nothing here yeah. from Google uh, talking about legacy, other than my Google alerts popping up saying four alternatives to consider instead of using G Suite because anyone forced to upgrade. That's kind of where I'm seeing it. Weird. I'm not seeing it in the admin panel either. I, I really don't know. It's weird. Right. Well, accordingly, you may have or you do have until May 1st to select a new plan. Or Google will do it for you based on what you're currently using with your G Suite Legacy Free Edition. Um, although the billing won't start for at least two months if you're automatically upgraded. Now, I'm starting to wonder, no, because it says that it would shut this one down. Because they were sending out the email saying that people had to upgrade to Workspace off of their G Suite accounts. This reads somewhat similar to that. Well. So Why? it's the May 1st <laughs> is that G Suite Legacy Free Edition will no longer be available right. uh, as starting May 1st. So starting May 1st, we'll seamlessly transition to workspace. And then there's, uh, which you can use at no cost until July 1st, 2022. Right. So, and then there is, there actually, uh, in some of these discussions, there's talks about getting it, uh, getting workspace free for essentially six months. So I think... Um, some are seeing where, you know, when they've moved over to workspace, they get six months from the time that they moved. Uh, 
So it may not be until just January or July 1st. Yeah. So there's some debate as to whether or not do I, do I wait until the day before May 1st to upgrade? So that I get six months from, you know, uh, April, end of April. Mm -hmm. uh, or do you just update update now and get used to workspace for free for a while until that July 1st date? So a little bit of uncertainty on that. Well, the um, interesting thing also, that's happening here is yeah. it's not like, okay, fine. They shut this down in 2012. Any businesses that are still using it, I get it. You know, pay the piper. And I was trying yeah. to think through this. Like, I personally have a bunch of these that I use, and I don't really use them. Okay, fine. But I do have one primary one. It is my own personal domain, and it's I've had it for 12 years. I was, you know, back in the or back in 2010, I set it up. was one of the original, you know, Google Apps before it was for work or anything like that. And that's been my mainstay for everything, uh, you know, that is completely personal and not associated with any of the projects or businesses that I've been working with over the years. And, you know, okay, I'd be willing to pay a couple bucks a month in order to keep the domain attached to it. It already is basically handicapped to the point where storage is the same as a regular Gmail account. It's not getting any of the other fancy features as far as I can tell. Like, you know, who is who are the people that are really being upset by this is what I find inter interesting. What I was really trying to figure out is it's not just the small businesses. It's the small businesses that were paying for or were having 100 users on there because I believe that was the limit at one time and are now going to be forced to be paying $6 a month minimum for all 100 users. Or, and part of the reason why this is causing a lot more uproar than one might think is a lot of this is families. People have used this as their, you know, their second brain for their family, so to speak, for years. They've got their um, purchases on there, things that they've bought, movies and, and music and subscriptions, and everything is routed through this one account, their Google Nest accounts, like all kinds of different things that they can have on there. Everything is routed through this and it is their main, um, I guess, you know, data set for their families and now it's like well i still want to be able to have this capability about it i don't want to pay six dollars a month per user and a number of these probably have lots of people on them because again it's been 12 years yeah and like i was complaining originally just like oh i don't want to pay you know six dollars a month it's not really worth it. it'd be worth a dollar two dollars a month for me to keep my domain there and i started thinking all right well what's the what's the real problem here? And that's where the real problem is. And where it really stung was that, and, and it does sound spoiled and pretentious and, you know, privileged and whiny and, and whatnot. But I think that if you step into the shoes of those groups where it's not about a business or obviously nonprofits can still have free plans and whatnot, it's those people that are using it for personal, for family and everything is on there, the Google photos. That's a pain in the ass to move off. Like we were saying at the top yeah. of the episode here is that's, even we know how to do it and have experience doing it. And we don't want to do it for that reason, because it's right. so difficult. Never mind those who have been using it for so long and don't know how to use it. But like, they also didn't provide an easy downgrade path, you know, for those who wanted to say, okay, great. Give me a Gmail account with, you know, some, give me the option to choose a new Gmail username and I'll start paying for, you know, Google one so that I have the extra storage on there if I need it yeah. or, or whatever yeah. it is, give me an easy way to do this. They're really just saying, you know, my way or the highway pay up. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that there definitely isn't, uh, it wasn't really, it doesn't explain things too well in terms of, you know, what to do if, um, you know, you decide you don't want to pay for this. What should you do with that account? What can happen? Because I think it talks about, you know, migrating data out. But honestly, other than your email and calendar events um, and any drive data that exceeds 15 gig or, well, 15 gigs for email as well as drive, you can actually still continue to use that Google account and access everything like the YouTube, uh, you know, YouTube platform that you've been using. You can access essentially everything but the core Google applications. Um, mm -hmm. But in some cases, you can still use the core Google applications because with Cloud Identity Free, well, you can still use Google Drive. It's still possible. You just have a limited capability of what you can do in Drive. And and this is the complexity, though, of what no, you know, no one really understands. Hence, the reason why we want to have this live event is to kind of talk through all these things and uh, discuss kind of what uh, people are also 
seeing happen, uh, you know, if they decide to move up to workspace uh, in this legacy free environment, and then, you know, also kind of uh, inject some of the, the knowledge that we have in working with those, especially the cloud and free accounts and what you can do. Uh, you know, maybe you maybe you upgrade uh, your, you know, one main account, and then you just give um, all of your other users in your environment access to a free cloud identity account and they use a Google group that they can access uh, their emails from. Now it's a little bit weird, but <laughs> it's possible. You know, you can do it. You can say, okay, well, log in with this identity account, access your Google group that has all your emails in it. Yes, you don't get them coming to, to, your, to that account there, but you could route them to another email address. You could route them to your Gmail account, for example. So your Gmail account can be a member of the group that has your domain and you could receive emails that way. Um, yeah, you probably can't send it out because you have to have the SMT relay and it authenticates now when you're outside of a domain, but you could send from the group. So it's just, it's just these weird things that like, yeah, it doesn't make it easy. It's not very straightforward. Who's going to want to do that? But you know, it's possible if you wanted to do something like that. Right. Another thing I wanted to mention also is the current offering of workspace individual would be a perfect use case here for <laughs> me if but... it allowed me to connect my domain to it, which it does not. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. more expensive than a single it's account high. of just regular workspace. What is it? Business basic. And, right. Uh, business starter. Business yeah. starter. Right. And. And I was looking at, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, you must get like two terabytes of storage and you just must, must get like something here. But I went to it and like, you don't get anything other than this like fancy new meeting uh, calendar scheduler and the ability to use Google Meet for longer than the limited amount of time that you currently have now on a consumer Gmail account. I'm like, where's the $10 per month value there? I don't know. I don't get it. What the value is. My sister-in-law was setting up a, a, you know, a, a business. She's doing some consulting and it's just her. And she was asking me, all right, so, you know, Mr. Mr. IT genius guy, how do I do this? And I was like, oh, all right, well, good, good news. Google just announced this new workspace individual plan. You should definitely take a look at it. And I started you looking thought, at it. I was like, what? Yeah. But no, never mind. Don't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I'm. Go ahead. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, I was just going to say, I mean, the, the workspace business standard uh, or business starter, starter yeah. uh, edition is um, definitely provides you more features for, you know, four bucks less a month. Right. So, what I can tell. And I'm sure that that scheduling functionality is going to come to workspace at some point. I'm going to have to business starter. I'm going to have to do a deep dive blog post going into the difference between business starter and um, uh, workspace individual because there's got to be more there. Google is smarter than that. I know they are. Well, <laughs> well make sure that you refer back to that uh, sheet that we have. Yes, of uh, course. Brian Kim's main uh, over on workspaceadmins.org in that little group of people. Uh, so that, yeah, that kind of has a pretty good side by side comparison. I don't, you know what, it's interesting. I, I haven't checked in there to see if we have the the legacy free edition in there uh, or not. I'll have I don't to know. see if we have it. But um, yeah. So that's why we're, you know, this is why we have the live event coming, uh, coming up soon next week. And now, as Jesse said, we have that tentatively scheduled for Wednesday next week, 2nd of February at 1 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we do have uh, one guest confirmed for that time. Uh, not not a Googler, but uh, someone who we've had on the podcast before. And we're trying to get a few Googlers. So we actually just reached out to some, some people uh, tonight, uh, just before we started recording. And it took us an hour to start recording tonight because we were... <laughs> chatting with some Googlers to try to get um, some connections to PMs and some other CEs uh, to kind of see who's available, who's going to be, you know, maybe best to talk about this and get some internal alignment too. Because like I said, and like we said earlier with, uh, you know, the visible changes and the invisible changes, there's a lot of different teams and yep. components to Google that, you know, they're just not always in sync with each other. And that's just what happens when you're, you know, a hundred thousand plus big company. Uh, in pretty much, you know, what is it, 90 plus countries, whatever it is. Oh, yeah. So 
And it's funny. This one of the Reddit, over. one of the Reddit articles or not articles, posts was uh, posts. how do we get a rep from Google to do an AMA? So uh, whoever wrote that, yeah, um, we are we're working on it. <laughs> yes, yes. So that is that is what uh, triggered uh, triggered us to kind of get the discussion going. As we saw that, and I think I think the initial request for the AMA was really kind of a broad. Uh, request in terms of coming on to do an AMA. I don't know if it was. It was yesterday to, that it was posted, so I imagine like it's a, related yeah, to this. It, I'm sure it's closely related, but I think someone further down, which is where I responded to, uh-huh. was more specifically talking about come on to discuss G Suite Legacy Free. Uh, and you know, Emre, who's uh, was on our, I think it was our third episode mm-hmm. uh, last season, our, our third ever edition, uh, third ever episode. Uh, is now you know a moderator there. I think he's a moderator. If he's not, he's just active. I think we got him active in there, and he responded. So we're gonna see you know, what we can figure out with uh, a live event next week. Start uh, you know hopefully to publicize that heavily, probably by the end of the week once we kind of firm up guests and uh, make sure when we can have that with the uh, the best guests on. And, you know, we might, we might do a couple of sessions, who knows? I mean, um, I think it'd be good to, well, I think we're going to have more, more live events. I think it would be good for us to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this first one uh, more than likely will cover the G Suite legacy uh, topic and then future ones, you know, can dive into some other ones that our listeners are interested in. So let us know. Yeah. Uh, so if you, you, sorry, if you haven't uh, done so already, go over to, uh, YouTube and look up Tab Geeks or Workspace Recap. Subscribe to the channel. I already have the event um, scheduled on there, and there's a button to click Reminder, so it'll give you a, a notification when we're about to go live. So even if we change the schedule, you'll get notified. Also, uh, obviously, keep it locked here for uh, any updates and uh, on our social media and our website for any updates on when that's going to go live. But it should be on uh, February 2nd, which is Wednesday. And uh, what time is it in Central, Steve? 1 p.m. Central. 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is where I'm located. And uh, we look forward to having all of your questions uh, asked and hopefully answered there. And we're going to try and get the highest ranking Googler we can possibly get over here to uh, give us whoever's got the answers. That's what we want to get. Um, you know, it's, this is something that isn't really what we would normally think about covering because it's, it's very personal, but it's not quite personal or consumer realm because it's still, it's still G Suite, it's still workspace and it's still, you know, it's not just Gmail. So, um, but even more than that, it's most of the, I would imagine most of the users of this service are. Google's most loyal customers, us, the admins who've been doing this forever. And that's why we got into workspace is because we've been doing it forever. In fact, as I said on the show, the reason why I didn't go for a reseller when I first started using Google Workspace uh, at my day job and onboarded Google Workspace and migrated everybody over is because I said, hey, I've been doing this for years on Google Apps already for my personal account. And, you know, it's it's that kind of love and and uh, adoption that we've had of Google over the years that we've just always stayed with them because that's what we do. We love it. Um, and, you know, I feel like a lot of people are feeling hurt, honestly, over this. It's almost like betrayal from the great, loving, adoring Google that now all of a sudden they take want to take this away. Now, of course, with the caveat that, you know, I sound like a whiny little brat when I say a lot of this stuff, but it's true. It's, you know, we, we love Google and, uh, you know, we don't want to go away, but people are already drumming up other solutions on Reddit and elsewhere of where to go next. I've even seen somebody suggesting <laughs> some shady Russian hosted free services. Well, I, and, you I know. don't know if it was shady. It's, I think it's a pretty big name in Russia, but you just have to be happy with, you know, hosting in Russia, data in Russia. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, right? <laughs> So. No, but some of the other options that they put up there were pretty shady as well. And I looked at, you know, just poking around some other options. And there's some newer ones. I saw one today that was uh, decentralized. And I'm going, how does that work? <laughs> Fully encrypted. I'm not sure I trust that either. Um, everybody potentially having access to the encrypted data. That's just asking to get hacked. I don't know. I got to look more into all of that. But it's it's definitely a developing story. And I think that, you know, they, they pulled the trigger on this inside of Google and did not expect the backlash that we are seeing here. And uh, this is just the, the very beginning of it. So uh, buckle up. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'm looking forward to our first live event yeah. uh, next Wednesday or whenever we have it. Uh, I know we had uh, some some live events with Workspace Admins early last year. Mm-hmm. We had a pretty amazing turnout. I think we, you know, we had a couple events uh, at the beginning of that year. We had Ross on. We had a Googler uh, talk about some of the uh, cloud identity and, uh, and Google um, Windows uh, advanced device management features. Yep. Ravi Kumar, and we, I think we had over 300 people on those lives. So uh, that was a really great turnout. So hopefully if we got similar numbers, I think if the number of posts and comments on Reddit are any indication, I think we will start far surpass that if we can get the word out Yep, and, uh, and get that scheduled uh, for next week. So, Well, folks, if you are friends with other admins that are big fans of Google, they likely have a legacy account. Share it with them. Let them know. We want to get the word out. We want to help all of you to really understand the best way to handle this and understand what's happening because, quite frankly, I'm not sure Google has all that on one page. So um, let's hold them to it. Anything else for the episode here, Steve? I think that's it. I think that's it. Covers everything. All right. So as we've been saying the last couple of weeks, go check out the YouTube channel. It's Tab Geeks on YouTube, T-A-B-G-E-E-K-S, or search for Workspace Recap. Also shows up. And uh, we're inches away from getting that, uh, speaking of custom domains, custom URL for our channel. We need to get to the 100 (laughs) users there. And uh, it's not quite a custom domain, but it is a custom URL on YouTube. And then... Um, hey, if we do this live event, maybe we'll get the thousand followers that we need in order to, or the thousand subscribers we need in order to get into the full partner program. So uh, that could be good. Um, anyway, uh, questions, comments, check us out, workspacerecap.com. Um, if you're currently listening on YouTube, thank you for being one of our uh, OG YouTube followers and subscribers if you haven't subscribed. Uh, I got to get the whole script that all the YouTubers say, you know, drop a like or hit the like down below or, yeah, or uh, smash, the like. smash a like down below, or drop, like it, drop it in the yeah. comments right right below the video. Yeah, drop. all that, all that jazz. Um, and uh, yeah, tell your friends and uh, we hope to see you on uh, the live event on February 2nd uh, or whenever it is. Uh, right now, assume it is February 2nd. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Workspace Weekend.